And now we have the rare opportunity of having a Democratic and Republican senator join us together, Democrat Mark Warner. He's chairman of the Senate Intelligence Committee, Republican Rob Portman. He sits on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. The two senators actually traveled together to Munich uh, earlier, uh, late last week. So, senators, welcome back to Meet the Press. Got a couple of pieces of news that have trickled out literally uh, in the last few minutes. Senator Portman, let me start with the news that President Zelensky has agreed to send a delegation uh, to meet with a Russian delegation and the border of Ukraine and Belarus. Uh, obviously, we're always going to be pro-diplomacy if diplomacy can work here. Any advice to the Ukrainians on how to manage uh, uh, these negotiations? I think Ukrainians uh, know how to do it, uh, and they also know to be uh, distrustful of whatever the Russians say, since everything that Vladimir Putin has said and other R Russian officials has, has been propaganda, disinformation. So. They need to be careful. And by the way, Belarus is where the Russians wanted to have the meeting. Belarus is now under control of Russia, and Belarus is aiding and abetting mm -hmm. the, the Russians' attack on their neighbor Ukraine. So it's, it's outrageous. But let me say, Chuck, at the outset, our hearts go out to the Ukrainian people today. I mean, this is something where the American people are standing firmly with Ukraine. There are over 40 rallies around the country today in support of Ukraine. I'll be at one in Cleveland, Ohio this afternoon. But around the world, you see this, including in Russia, the world standing up in ways that, frankly, I haven't seen this kind of unity since 9-11. And I think that is something that will, in the end, yeah. be very helpful. But we've got to provide more military assistance. We've got to tighten up these sanctions further. By the way, in your conversation yeah. with the ambassador, you talked about how sanctions did not deter. That's because tough sanctions were not put in place. So we could have and should have done more. And many of us were calling for that. But we are where we are now. So we need to continue to tighten it up, including putting all Russian banks uh, under this uh, swift ban. Senator Warner, the other piece of news today is uh, Vladimir Putin has, it's a bit of a saber rattle here, uh, is raised, uh, ordered his uh, Russian nuclear deterrent forces on alert. How should the United States respond to that? Well, first of all, the United States response has been stronger because we've actually brought all our European and other allies along with us. Mm -hmm. um, Rob and I were in Munich last week. The Europeans were, were believing, but, uh, uh, and mostly in, but not fully in. But look at what, what's happened over the last few days. We've got Nord Stream 2 sanctions. Yeah. We've personally sanctioned Putin. He now joins that group of, like, Gaddafi and Assad, of one of the few world leaders ever been personally sanctioned. We have the SWIFT actions, because if we'd sanction SWIFT, that's a European organization, the fact that SWIFT is acting in concert with us, kicking Russian banks out. And you're seeing even Russian, former Russian allies, like Kazakhstan, yeah. where Putin sent troops recently, refuse to back Putin. I think Putin totally underestimated both the Ukrainians' fight, and I want to echo what Rob said, yeah. that uh, we have great respect for Zelensky rallying the nation and this worldwide support for the Ukrainians. I think he underestimated Ukrainians' resolve. So far, thank God, he's not thrown everything. He's not thrown the cyber attacks the way right. we expected. Um, but these are very dangerous days. And one last point. Yeah. You know, remarkably, what he's also been able to do is unify the vast majority of us in the Senate, Democrats and Republicans alike. Which we're has been the, quite difficult we're lately. With, right. We're yes. with the Ukrainian people, we're with NATO, and he's yeah. going to pay a high price. i got to ask you about something that the ranking member in your intel committee uh, said, uh, tweeted overnight, uh, tweeted on Friday night, Marco Rubio. He said this, Senator Warner, I wish I could share more, but for now I can say it's pretty obvious to many that something is off with Putin. He has always been a killer, but his problem now is different and significant. It would be a mistake to assume that Putin would react the same way he would have five years ago. This is an open question. Is Putin a rational actor? What, do, what does our intelligence folks tell you? Chuck, Chairman of the Intelligence Committee, I'm not going to comment on any specific intelligence. But what we do know is that over the last couple of years, Putin has been more and more isolated. He's not been in the Kremlin for the most part. He's been down at his place in Sochi or at his Dhaka outside of, uh, outside of Moscow. And when you are an authoritarian leader and you have less and less inputs and you're only hearing from people that want to say to the boss, hey, you're right, right uh, I think that leads to miscalculation. And I think that is what has happened in the case of his invasion in Ukraine. Senator Portman, uh, he went into Ukraine. He did not go into Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia. Those three are NATO countries. Ukraine was not. In hindsight, should we have brought Ukraine into the NATO alliance? Yes. And I think that's a, a, a very important point to make. Even now, Chuck, we should be allowing Ukraine and, by the way, allowing other countries that may want to come forward. Georgia is one. 
Uh, I'm told that Finland and Sweden, maybe two others at some point, we should allow them to come into NATO. There's a process called the MAP process, which is basically a roadmap to get into NATO. Many of us have been calling for NATO to allow Ukraine to go down that path. We should have done it. If we had done it, I don't think that we would be in the situation we're in now. And I think, you know, other people said the opposite. They said, well, if, yeah. if we allow them into NATO, this, this will make Russia mad. Well, you know what? Here they are anyway, uh, yeah. with this atrocity in, in Ukraine, killing already hundreds of Ukrainians, wounding thousands of them. Um, unprecedented since World War II to have one country inv invade another country's borders. And if NATO were there, I don't think he'd be doing it. Uh, assuming that NATO, you know, would respond, which I'm seeing. Uh, I agree with what Mark just said, is yeah. that Putin miscalculated. You know, he thought this would divide NATO. In fact, it has strengthened NATO and brought us together in ways we haven't seen in years. In fact, was it a mistake for President Biden, Senator Warner, to rule out any troops in Ukraine for this reason? We've always had a policy of strategic ambiguity when it comes to Taiwan. Make China not sure what we're going to do. Should we have done the same? I don't think the American public, or for that matter, our NATO allies, um, would have been wanting American or NATO troops on the ground in Ukraine. I do think we've had, I think the administration, I criticized them many times, mm -hmm. but NATO a year ago was broken in the aftermath of President Trump. Even four months ago, NATO, other than us and the British, the rest of the NATO nations were not fully bought, bought into this threat. They are fully bought in at this point. And I think you're going to see, I, I still worry about, for example, one of the things we talked about off air, yeah. if Putin launches his full cyber capabilities, right. shuts down the power in Ukraine, does that somehow shut down the power in eastern Poland as well? Because yeah. once you let malware out, could that shut off Polish How do you feel about or, this idea that Article 5 well, that's, could be... Uh, could be invoked on a cyber attack. Cyber attack is, again, one of those areas where we've had so-called strategic ambiguity. But if you suddenly see American troops uh, get hurt because they've, the power's been shut off or Polish citizens die because the hospitals go down, you're very rapidly approaching what I think is an Article 5 violation. By the way, are you also open to NATO expansion? I'm open to NATO expansion, but that are you has ready to, to put Ukraine in now? That at this has point, to be or done at least after this is. That over? actually has to be done in concert with all 30 NATO nations. Yeah, there is a process, and I think the administration, frankly, NATO was right by not during Putin's pressure campaign to somehow say we should take away that right of uh, Ukraine to have that opportunity to join NATO. All right, Senator Portman, I'm going to uh, change the subject for one quick subject. There's a Supreme Court nominee. Uh, I don't think this is going to be a very contentious hearing, but I'm curious, what would it take for you to vote to confirm her? Well, I'm going to look at her record and look at her qualifications, as I think uh, people will. In this case, I don't think, Chuck, it will be as partisan we've seen in the past, as we did as an example with, uh, with Judge Kavanaugh when, mm -hmm. when he was nominated. Um, as you know, she'll be replacing another liberal on the court. And Democrats have 50 votes, and plus one with the vice president, they have the ability to confirm. But I think the rest of us uh, on the Republican side are going to be looking at her record, looking at her qualifications. We don't believe you had to legislate from the bench. Uh, we think the, the Supreme Court focus ought to be on protecting our rights and following the Constitution, and that's what we'll be looking for. All right. Senator Rob Portman, Republican uh, uh, from Ohio. I, Senator Warner, I didn't ask you about it. I assumed you're for her. Listen, I think Judge Jackson has got great qual qualifications, but one thing we could do right now, yeah. back on the issue at hand, yes. Rob Portman and I have a bill that would require when cyber attacks take place yeah. that the government be notified so we can share with the private sector. You want to make us stronger and safer? Let's get that piece of legislation done this week. All right. Well, we'll take a look at that. Senators Portman and Warner, really appreciate you coming on together, especially at a time like this. Uh, and let's hope uh, that the folks in Ukraine... Uh, we'll get some relief soon. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.